Welcome to Invest Northern Ireland's COVID-19 Response Webinar Series. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the next in our series of webinars in response to the COVID-19 crisis. I'm Patrick Dewar, and I work within the corporate finance team at Invest NI. And this morning, you'll hear from a number of panelists on the coronavirus business interruption loan schemes. There are over 280 registered for the call this morning. There's a lot of SMEs and some larger businesses also. I know it's a very worrying and uncertain time for you all and those you employ, and that your businesses are facing unprecedented challenges, particularly around cash flow and getting access to funding. This morning, we'll provide you with detail on the coronavirus interruption loan schemes announced by the UK government. In addition to these loan schemes, we also want to help you understand what other options that may be available to you through your bank to help ease cash flow pressures, such as capital repayment holidays or overdraft extensions. We also want to provide some direction on what it is that the bank will be asking for if you already approach them for new or increased lending and the importance to provide clear and concise information and really putting your best foot forward when you do get in contact with them. We'll open up this morning with Susan Nightingale, Northern Ireland Senior Manager within the British Business Bank. Susan will provide us with an overview of CBILDS, that's the Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, and CL Builds, the Coronavirus Large Business Interruption Loan Scheme. You'll then hear from Jeff Sharp, Head of Corporate Banking at Danska, who'll provide us with an update on how Danska are supporting their customers through a number of measures, including the coronavirus loan schemes. And lastly, we'll hear from Charlie Curlin. Charlie's the Director of Corporate Finance at Grant Thornton, and Charlie will provide us with a bit more detail on preparing your lending application and things that you should expect and consider as part of the application process with any lender. At the end, there'll be an opportunity to put questions to the panelists. I encourage you to send through your questions throughout using the Q&A facility, and I can put these to the panel at the end. There are a lot of businesses um, registered here today, and we will do our best to take as many of your questions as possible. If we don't get answering all your questions, we will follow up separately afterwards. So before I hand over to Susan, I just want to take this opportunity to thank British Business Bank, Danske Bank, and Grant Thornton for agreeing to be part of our webinar series. Over to you, please, Susan. Okay, good morning, all. I hope everyone is well and enjoying the weather as best they can. So firstly, thanks to Patrick and the team at Invest NI for the end of invitation to participate this morning. As Patrick said, I work within the UK network team at British Business Bank as the senior manager for Northern Ireland. So um, just in terms of agenda, over the course of the um, the next 10 minutes and hopefully without the interruption of any children, uh, I'll talk through Coronavirus Business Interruption Loan Scheme, which has been live now for just over four weeks, and also the Coronavirus Large Business Interruption Loan Scheme, which opened for applications on Monday of this week. So we'll cover the key features of both the schemes, and uh, we'll touch briefly on the eligibility criteria and, and highlight just some of the key differences between the two before handing you over to, to Jeff and Charlie, who can cover off some of the, the finer and more operational detail. So uh, what is Siebel's? Uh, the scheme is part of a wider package of government support for UK businesses and employees. It provides financial support, whether that be term loan, overdraft, invoice finance or asset finance to the smaller businesses across the UK that are losing revenue and seeing their cash flow disrupted as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak. It's a scheme of significant scale and probably more powerful than any guarantee intervention we've seen before. And the government have confirmed it will be demand led and resourced accordingly. Since Siebel's, um, or sorry, the, the scheme can be accessed through over 40 accredited lenders across the UK with the majority of our NI high street banks um, uh, included in that number. Since Siebel's launched on the 23rd of March, we have seen significant demand um, for, for the scheme with total lending has doubled in the week from the 14th to the 21st of April, with over 16,000 facilities valued in excess of 2.8 billion now approved. And those figures are, are hot off the press this morning from UK Finance. 
Encouragingly, uh, in Northern Ireland, we've seen a number of examples where the money has already reached the businesses, and that's certainly not an easy ask, given the speed at which the banks have had to operationalise this scheme, and at a time when they too are facing the, the staffing and remote working challenges all businesses have had to deal with over the last number of weeks. So well done to, to all those involved. Having listened to the feedback from businesses and, and stakeholders, changes regarding the schemes, features and eligibility were announced on the Friday the 3rd of April. And these changes now mean even more businesses that have been impacted by the crisis can access the funding they need. So we'll touch on those changes in a, in a bit more detail later. So just the, the key features then of Siebel's maximum value of a facility provided under the scheme will be five million pounds. Uh, the scheme provides the lender with the government backed partial guarantee of 80% against the outstanding facility balance and that's subject to an overall cap per lender. Unlike EFG, uh, the Siebel's, with Siebel's there is no fee for the businesses to access the scheme, but it is worth noting that the lenders will pay a small fee. The biggest change from EFG, and I suppose the real game changer, has been the introduction of the Business Interruption Payment, or BIP, as it's commonly referred to. Essentially, this is where the, the government will cover the first 12 months of interest payments and any lender levied fees, so businesses will benefit from no upfront costs um, and the lower initial repayments. Finance terms for Siebel's are up to six years for the term loans and asset finance facilities and up to three years for the overdraft and invoice finance facilities. So just in terms of the amendments that were announced at the beginning of the month, um, as of the 6th of April then, there will be no personal guarantees of any form taken under the scheme for facilities below 250K. So this is no longer at the discretion of the lender. For facilities above 250,000, personal guarantees may still be required. Uh, but recoveries under these guarantees will be capped at a maximum of 20% of the outstanding balance of the Siebel's facility, and that's after the, the proceeds of business assets have been applied. And importantly there, the principal private dwelling uh, remains exempt. So each of those changes should be retrospectively applied by the lenders uh, for any Siebel's facilities offered or drawn since the 23rd, and that will really ensure that all business owners receive the, the same level of, of government protection. So it's vitally important, I suppose, just to remember that this is a debt product, it's not a grant, and regardless of the government back guarantee, the borrower will always remain 100% liable for the debt. Okay, so just moving on to eligibility criteria. The SME must be UK based with turnover of no more than £45 million per year on a consolidated group basis must have a borrowing proposal which were it not for the current pandemic would be considered viable by the lender and I, I don't want to dwell too much on this point as I know Jeff's going to talk about it in more detail but this is not about looking at cash flows in the last few weeks or the next few weeks if that was the case there'd be very very few businesses that would be classed as viable this is about looking backwards um you know was the business viable pre covid-19 and then looking forward and will that business return to viability in the future despite the short term cash flow pressures that are that are evident and expected so the business may self certify that it has been impacted by coronavirus as well and one other point just to note here is really that insufficient security is no longer a condition to access the scheme and this, in a, this is that's in addition to the scheme now being open to businesses who would have previously met the requirements for a commercial facility or business as usual with their banks. So two significant enhancements there, and importantly, making more, more businesses eligible to receive the business interruption payment that we referred to. Okay, so just moving on to CL bills. Uh, last Friday, the, the Chancellor of Exchequer announced details of the Coronavirus Large Business Interruption Loan Scheme. And this new scheme focuses on a relatively narrow area of the market, but one that's vitally important to the NI and indeed the UK economy. So CL Bills provides finance to mid-size and larger UK businesses with turnover above that 45 million threshold. Uh, the scheme, which opened for applications on Monday just of this week, will be delivered by a number of accredited lenders that we typically expect to see demand for facilities at this level. So a number of the, the high street banks have already received accreditation 
Other existing Siebel's lenders can, ex, uh, can seek expedited accreditation onto it, and we've also published requests for proposal documents that make it available to any new lenders then as well. So the Siebel scheme will support term loans, revolving credit facilities, including overdrafts, invoice finance, and asset finance facilities. And businesses with the, the same private equity or venture capital backer, whether even where that backer has a dominant stake, they will still be treated as a separate business for the purposes of assessing turnover. So just moving on to the, the key features then of CL bills. Um, we can provide facilities of up to 25 million for businesses with turnover between 45 million and 250 million and facilities of up to 50 million for those businesses with a turnover of more than 250 million. And it's just worth pointing out there that the initial communications uh, a number of weeks ago around CL bills did refer to an upper turnover cap of 500 million and that has since been removed. So there is there is no upper limit there for eligibility. The scheme provides a lender with a government backed guarantee, 80% um, of the outstanding facility balance. Again, in line with Siebel's, there's no fee for businesses to access the scheme, but the lenders will, will pay a small fee. Finance terms, slightly different. Uh, finance terms here are from three months to three years. Um, we have no personal guarantees permitted for facilities under 250K. And for those over 250K, the claims on the PGs cannot exceed 20% of the losses uh, after all other recoveries have been applied. Again, just that reminder that the, it is a debt product and the borrower will always remain 100% liable for the debt. Okay, so then just moving on in terms of CL Bill's eligibility criteria for the larger scheme then. Applicants must be UK based with turnover uh, greater than 45 million. Importantly, that the scheme is only open to those businesses who have not received support under the Bank of England's COVID corporate financing facility. Uh, businesses from virtually all sectors can apply and they should have a borrowing proposal, which were it not for the pandemic, would be considered viable uh, by the lender. So the lender and the borrower are still free to enter into loan agreements outside of um, Siebel's, uh, where there's no economic benefit to the borrower of taking out a Siebel, CL bills loan over normal commercial lending. So that, that's really both the schemes at a very high level. But just before I finish, I want to re-emphasize some of the, the key differences between the two. So in terms of turnover, Siebel's is for the smaller businesses, a turnover of no more than 45 million, with CL bills then coming into play for the mid-size and larger businesses with turnover greater than 45 million and no upper limit applying there. In relation to the size of the facility available, maximum facility value of 5 million for Siebel's and 25 or 50 million under CL bills, just depending on turnover levels. Repayment terms limited to a maximum of three years under CL bills, and that's irrespective of the type of finance requested but will vary between three and six years for Siebel's, depending on um, what variant you go with. I suppose the final notable difference between the two is the business interruption payment. Under Siebel's, the government will cover any interest in any lender levied fees in the first 12 months, and this won't apply to CL bills. Uh, whilst there is no business interruption payment on CL bills, borrowers will benefit from a proportionate reduction in pricing in return for the lenders receiving the capital and risk benefits associated with the 80% the guarantee. So look, just before I pass you back to Patrick, I think it's worth emphasizing the scale, both of these interventions and the speed at which they've come to market. Despite some initial teeth and problems, the, the figures from, the, from UK finance are very encouraging. And the reality is we're seeing probably several hundred million being approved on a daily basis. The support's now starting to flow out to the businesses that need it, and hopefully both the schemes will play a, a significant role in lessening the impact of the crisis for many of the businesses out there. So thank you. That's all from me. Um, happy to take any questions you may have.
Yeah, look, Susan, thanks for that. And uh, to quickly summarise, I suppose, for the audience, where a business has a turnover less than 45 million, they can apply for a loan or an overdraft that is ultimately interest fee free and fee free for 12 months. However, for the larger businesses where the turnover exceeds 45 million, they can still avail of a government guarantee loan, albeit this will not be interest free for the first 12 months. Um, around accreditation, and I've seen some questions already just come in there around which of the local lenders are currently accredited to the, the schemes um, and maybe you know tell us where we can find and see that list of um, lenders and maybe give us some context around some new lenders um, gaining accreditation. You know, one particular comment from somebody there was, is there a, a time frame or a cutoff there worried that because their bank isn't yet accredited and of the thousand that they're going to get accredited soon, they're worried that will there be a time frame or cutoff for them being able to avail of CBILTs or CBILTs? Builds. Okay, uh, sure. The, um, you can view a full list of the accredited lenders on the BBB website um, and you can filter these lists uh, by region, by financial variant, whether that's term loan overdraft, asset finance or invoice, uh, and also by the financial requirements. So that, that list's very easily accessible for, for everyone and gives you a clear picture of, of who's lending and what they're lending. Um, there are a number of, of national lenders that are operating in NI, but I suppose in terms of on the ground lenders here, we have the majority of the NI banks, so Danske Barclays, uh, BOI, Ulster, Santander and HSBC, Close Brothers on the invoice uh, finance side of things and then uh, Funding Circle have also recently been accredited just, uh, I think the announcement went live this week. So uh, in terms of bringing new, new lenders on, I mean British Business Bank are 100% committed to creating more choice and diversity of supply for, for businesses out there and Funding Circle are a prime example of that. You know, as a lender, they're, they're set up to attract new customers and, and have automated processes in place to ensure speed of delivery. So over the over the coming days and weeks, there's significant additional resource has, has been put into this area. So it, over the, the, the next period of time, we'll hope to see a number of new lenders coming on stream. And that's going to be different lenders with different risk appetites and, and different views on viability. So as I say, it's about increasing that, that choice and diversity of supply for the businesses out there. I would ask people to be mindful that the accreditation process under normal circumstances would take anywhere between six to nine months for us to bring a lender on board. But there's a significant amount of work going on in the background to streamline that process and um, whilst we, we certainly have shortened it, um, you can appreciate when you're using taxpayers' money, we have to conduct proper due diligence on those providers that we're, we're bringing on board. Um, it's worth maybe just saying on the CL bills piece, the, the full, again, that the website will provide uh, a list of the accredited lenders, but it's not a case that um, we're automatically transferring all 46 or 47 of the Siebel's accredited lenders across. Um, as I referred to earlier, it's it's going to be limited to those lenders who expect to see demand in that in that sort of space. So uh, typically, the the banks um, are already are are you know going to be the key ones there. And you've got Danske, Ulster, Barclays, HSBC, and Santander already operational for CL bills. Um, and an expedited process in place for um, those other Siebel's lenders that would be hoping to uh, also deliver CL bills. Yeah, that's, was, that's... There, was there another element there? Or does that... No, no, you touched on it. Did you touch on the um, whether or not there'd be a cutoff or a, a deadline? Yeah, sorry, that, I knew there was something else. Um, no, I mean, the scheme is open. Um, I think it, uh, at the moment, is open through to October. Um, with the potential that that can be extended out to December, so there's no um, there's no short term panic on that. There's plenty of time for uh, you know we're mindful it takes a bit of time to get lenders up and running, and um, also to get them operational once they've been accredited. So no, there's there's plenty of of time for that. Yeah, and look, that's great. So, you know, in summary, there it's there's lots of lenders accredited, and we can see them all on the BBB website. And we say to the businesses and people on the on the line to keep an eye on that, stay in contact with your own lender, and that's regularly updated. So there potentially it could is. be some more household names that you'll see coming onto that in the near future.
Um, Susan, just a, a related point, um, earlier in the week BBB announced a future fund. Um, can you provide us with some information on this and really where does that fit in with regards to the C-Bills and the CL-Bills schemes? Sure. Um, yep, yeah, Chancellor um, announced on Monday there that, that we, in partnership with the BBB, they were going to establish a new future fund to support the, the high growth businesses that have been affected by, by COVID. So these businesses typically have been unable to access the other support schemes that are out there, such as CBILs, because they're either pre-revenue, pre-profit, um, and typically, I suppose, rely on equity investment. So it is early stages, and, and whilst the government have, have issued the headline terms on this, what we have at the moment is is nothing more really than the bare bones of a, of a scheme. It's going to be, be developed as the same partnership with BBB over the coming weeks. Um, and that's going to include details of, of how it will operate and how to apply for the scheme. The intention is that we'll launch uh, for applications in May and then initially be open until the end of September there. At a high level in, in terms of what details available to be shared at this stage, um, the fund will provide UK companies with between 125,000 uh, and 5 million from government money um, with private investors matching that on at least a one-to-one -one basis. Um, so you, you may have seen it um, having been referred to as that um, a £250 million fund and that is and sometimes also referred to as the £500 million fund. So just to clarify there, the £250 million is the government contribution and then matched on a, on a private basis on a one-to-one -one brings it up to the £500 million. Um, any other points, I suppose, in terms of eligibility, the the business must be unlisted UK registered company um, that has previously raised at least 250,000 in equity investment from third party investors over the last five years. But there will be further detail on that criteria and how the fund will operate it will be published in due course. I think the key thing is um, it's an equity type investment based on convertible loan notes. It's not a bank loan in, in any way, shape or form. Um, and those loans then will automatically convert to equity at the, the next qualifying funding round. So very much a work in progress um, and another response from the government in terms of the gaps that are, are, are still evident. So we hope over the next three to four weeks to really be able to bring more detail on that as and when it comes through. Yeah, look, that's great. I suppose it's a bit similar to whenever the government announced the CL bills aspect, we sort of got a flavour for it. Then we had to yeah. wait a few weeks till the detail come out. And I suppose for the benefit of the audience, anything that you'd said there is all that information is available and in summary on the BBB website.